I got quoted $5,000 and four weeks to build a simple landing page by a design company. So in AI Chad like fashion, I decided I was going to do it myself. And so in this video, I want to break down for you the four step AI workflow and process that I moved through to build this thing in just under an hour. It will be a real banger, as they say. If you're new to the channel, my name's Sean. Over the last six years, I built my own SaaS to 20K MRR and helped scale an eight figure marketing company. And these days, building stuff with AI is pretty much all I do. This video is going to be great for people that have built or are intending to build something cool like a SaaS company or an agency and want to learn some principles and systems for actually selling it. And spoiler alert, the real value behind this system is how we extract buyer pains out from our ideal avatar and then overlay them into the actual landing page creation process, which we go through in step three. So don't go skipping through those timestamps. But that being said, let's get into it. Now, there's actually three pieces to this puzzle. Number one, how do we actually understand what's going to motivate the person to actually buy this thing from us? Number two, how do we take that understanding and translate it into written copy that's going to be on the page? And number three, how do we tie that together visually so that it looks nice? So since we're in a perpetual war for attention span in this day and age, I'll start with the visual component first. How we're going to pull off the actual visual design. So there's a few libraries that I like for this process. So you do not have to use this one that I am showing. You can apply this process to any open source library or closed source library. Now, I really like Magic UI, number one, because it's pretty cheap to get access to everything they have. So they have really cool templates. They have really cool pre-built components. So for example, if you wanted to show off something like a testimonial carousel, how can you do that really quickly in a way that looks really, really nice? They also have cool things like bento grid so that we can showcase features or other value propositions in a really visually compelling way. Really nice animated lists. Maybe you do a bunch of integrations and you want to have cool cir circling orbs. Maybe you want cool special effects like laser beams shooting out of your components. Whatever it might be, they really do have a ton of really cool stuff in here that you can apply to what you are building. And so point being, a lot of production ready, out of the box things that work together and they actually perform. So you're not going to have a bunch of performance issues once you launch this site. So if you wanted to, you could go through and actually pop some of these open and look at them. Now, I'm a strong believer in the idea that AI scales existing expertise. So at each stage of the building process in really anything, I like to think through, how can I stand on the shoulders of giants, right? How can I leverage the expertise and skill of other people in order to accomplish what I'm trying to do? And design, obviously, no different. Now, one of the reasons that I really like Magic UI is that they have an MCP server that you can use. So whether you're using a tool like Cursor, whether you want to chat with this inside of your Claude desktop, you can get access to all of these components in that environment, which we are going to use in step three of the process. So step two here, and this is really critical. I think if you take one thing from this video outside of this really awesome workflow I'm going to show you, is this concept. If you attempt to sell to anyone, you end up selling to no one. A lot of people that are trying to build companies or sell stuff make the mistake of not really fleshing out who the ideal buyer for this thing is and what the struggles, pain points, and aspirations of those people are and what solutions they've tried to solve this problem in the past. And what happens is you end up just making these kind of vague statements that don't really speak to that ideal prospect. So ends up sounding generic and people do not buy things that are generic. They buy things that make their life better. They are buying a new version of themselves. And I know that sounds hand wavy, but that's realistically what needs to happen. So what we're going to do is exactly that using this prompt, which I've gone through a lot in this channel. So I'm not going to go through every single piece of this in detail. But basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to hone in on someone that has a very clear problem. We're trying to communicate what our offer is, what's unique about it, what we do. And then we're trying to build a buyer avatar. Now, the real pieces of this that are important to understand is that a lot of people think about the demographics of the buyer. 
right? They're a B2B SaaS founder and they make this much money and these are their favorite books to read. But you need to get a level deeper into the psychographics. What are the pains that person experiences? What are the values that they hold? What are the things in their life that are major decision-making drivers? Those things are going to be a lot more important and we want them framed through the context of what it is that we do. So I plugged this in for the avatar for this landing page and we can see the type of responses that we get. Now, part D, these smart market questions are a really good indicator of whether or not you really know this person well. Can you answer the question as it pertains to like what you offer? What keeps your prospect awake at night with indigestion burning in their chest, staring at the ceiling, not able to go to sleep? If you can answer what that problem is for this person and fuse those insights into how you write your copy and how you structure your landing page, you are going to be golden. So if we're talking about the context of like a SaaS founder, there's this mental loop of all of the things that need to be done, the feeling like they need to be involved in every single one of those things, but simultaneously realize that they do not have the capacity to do all of those things. And so there's this nagging sensation where their competitors are blowing past them, their industry is changing, it's moving very quickly, and they can't keep pace with it because they need to be involved in everything that happens. And so you guys will have access to this prompt specifically, which I recommend you do no matter what stage you're in, because this thing works for B2B customers and B2C customers alike. The only real difference is what pieces of this profile you choose to emphasize and how you communicate your features around these things. So for example, if you're writing to a B2B audience, it's gonna be more driven by logic. Proof is gonna be a lot more important as far as case studies of people that you've worked with in the past, other companies that use this tool to get certain results, maybe piecing off different use cases of the tool for specific verticals. Whereas if it's B2C driven, it's going to be more about the emotional side of things, the personal transformation that takes place with somebody, and overall like shorter, punchier copywriting. So obvious step, human in the loop, make sure that that makes sense and dial in things that you know are specific to your avatar and iterate on it. But it's a really helpful framework to make sure you can actually answer those questions. Now, once you have that, we want to start thinking through, well, what does an ideal landing page structure actually need to have, right? What are all the different sections and what is the intention of having each of those sections? And so we have another prompt here where we are breaking that down precisely. So for each of these, we have the section name and the purpose of the section. So we have our nav, we have our hero section, we have our core value proposition. We have an overview of like our features or our services or quick little video demos of the app, which you see a lot on these types of pages. We have proof, right? Proof and results. If you're in a very technical field, going even deeper into some of those features can be valuable. If you're in a B2C space, having a pricing section, risk reversals and objection handling. How can you make it seem like the bigger risk is not actually trying this thing out? And then a final CTA section. Those are really the core components. And it just becomes a question of how do you communicate within those sections? And maybe how do you organize them based on what you think people need to hear first? And again, I have the fill in the blank prompts for all of this in the description below. So now what we get out the other side is a lo-fi kind of mock-up of sorts where we have what each section is going to be. And now one thing that I find incredibly valuable, no matter what I'm doing, whether I'm building actual UX for some app that I'm building or doing any other sort of brainstorming style exercise, I like to have the language model give me multiple angles or thoughts on a specific section. So in the hero section, for example, it's given me three different options. Now, how it's choosing to structure what goes in here is based on what we just went through above. Who is the person? What's their problem? What's keeping them awake at night? And what is the purpose of each major section that we have on our site from the hero all the way down to the footer? So now it goes through this process again for every major section. So if we were to get to like, what's the core value proposition of what we offer, which in this example, it's an AI agency. Its first conceptual option for us was framing things around the five major bottlenecks, right? What are the five major bottlenecks that a B2B or even a B2C SaaS founder is most likely experiencing? Content creation and repurposing takes a ton of time. 
especially for B2B personalizing cold outbound, because that is a major driver of how B2B businesses actually get their initial customers. Scaling like internal SOPs and processes with little internal apps that you could build on things like Lovable, for example. Client support and retention. One big thing that drives most successful SaaS companies is that the founders are heavily involved in the customer support initially. They want to be really close to their customers to understand the pains and the struggles. That's a very time intensive process, right? And so we go on and on listing out what are all of these different options for every major section of our website. So this takes us to step three, where we want to integrate those different sections that we just got from Claude. And so we're going to pick out the ones that we want. And we need to now integrate this with the actual design system from Magic MCP. So we want to give it access to all of the components that it has, plus our instructions on what it needs to do in order to build a conversion-centric landing page. And so what we're prompting are the seven principles of conversion-centric design, which are listed out here. So we have focus, structure, consistency, benefits, attention, trust, and reducing friction, right? Friction and taking action. So we're taking those seven principles plus the structure of what we know needs to be on our site, right? Those sections that we went through. And then we're gonna give it all of the context of each section that we said we wanted included in this design. And so I pasted this here into Claude Desktop. It's gone through, it's used the MCP server to pull all of the different components and text animations and special effects and all of that stuff. And now it has actually built us out a principled approach to actually building this thing. Cause it's one thing to have the copy but it's another thing to present that visually in a way that does the thing we want it to do. And so this output is gonna go through and it's gonna build a mock-up of every single section, the principles driving that section, the actual copy that needs to be on the page and how to execute on it visually. So for example, in our hero section above the fold, here's what the headline's gonna be, here's what the sub headline would be, here's the primary call to action, Here's how we're going to integrate those conversion-centric design principles into this hero section. And then the cool part is it's going to actually recommend the components from inside of Magic MCP. So it's going to look at what we're trying to accomplish and then getting to the level of what components to use to actually accomplish that thing. And so this, like everything else, it goes through and it repeats for every single section. So what you want to do is copy this output and then we're gonna take it over into our coding tool of choice and actually build this thing out. So what I like to do here is literally just copy that markdown plan and paste it into a directory inside of wherever you are building. In this case, we're using cursor, but this would work for anything. So one of the more straightforward ways to do this is to use a tool like cursor inside of planning mode. And so I've basically given it the context of this plan and I've given it some information. It's a Next.js project. It's got the Magic MCP server. You need to build this out piece by piece. Go build me a plan. And so what this does is it builds out a plan that has references back to our actual plan. And so every section of that page is outlined here from the design system to creating the Magic UI components to building out the different sections, the hero section, the value prop, the feature carousel, the social proof, right? It has a plan to go out and build all of this stuff. And now it is going through and executing on these in order. And so out the other side, we get something that looks pretty good. Now, there were a few things that I saw inside of Magic MCP that I really liked where they have this terminal window, which it's a little expanded and needs to be dialed in. But this is where it's time for a human to come in and do that last 10%. But basically every single component that we had planned out is now mapped in to actual Magic MCP components and it's been built out with our actual copy. And so that final step, which I mean, it's true of all things with AI is that we need to polish it off. It has the structure, but there's always things that we can do to dial it in. And so I have this additional prompt that you can use to have it parse through the page and make sure that it's not making very common mistakes that AI systems tend to make. So we're covering off on things like color systems and contrast. AI tends to randomize colors, use a lot of gradients all over the place, not really use sufficient contrast, doesn't tend to use unified typography, spacing can be messed up, 
the hierarchy of like the information that you're presenting and the importance and the emphasis of certain components gets lost. And so I have this additional prompt that you can pop in to polish off and push it that extra 10% that it needs to make it something that you are really super proud of. And of course, one of the things that I really like about Magic UI is that they have good support for light mode and dark mode. So if you didn't want the darker theme for whatever reason, you can come through and personalize it to your heart's content. All right, so we have two different versions of this because I, I built this thing twice. So we just looked at one of the initial versions and now we have this other version, which again needs to be kind of fixed because there's some issues with like type spacing and stuff. But this is what we got out the other side. So pretty nice looking UI out of the gate. So nice headline, exactly as we said, with the sub headline. Um, not sure what this section is supposed to be, but pretty cool little trust badge here. I kind of like how they structure these five bottlenecks, the five bottleneck framework, how they chose to show off different components. Feels pretty nice. I like how they're nesting a lot of these different components in. So again, going through a lot of our features on a high level and then getting into some of our more detailed features, again, with some pretty nice, pretty cool animations. This looks very professional, in my opinion. Some different proof counting systems. This looks really nice. I like this section. Obviously, these headlines need to be fixed. Different testimonials for people that have used this, this product. I would come through here and put in actual user testimonials. So overall, pretty nice design that we got out the other side. Now, the point of this video is, is not that designers aren't valuable or that they're being replaced by AI. It's that solo builders or people with small teams can build things that are very visually impressive, that takes them 90% of the way there, that gets them their first few hundred or few thousand users without having to break the bank. And so my request to you is try this process out and let me know what type of results you get. I don't record videos like this to just be another undifferentiated voice shouting out from the void. I want this stuff to be genuinely valuable and helpful to people that are trying to build real things and potentially build businesses behind them. So I really do appreciate when you guys show me what you've built in my comments, in the group, engage with other people, and build a real community around this stuff. So implement this and do let me know what the results are for you. As always, all the prompts are in the description below, and make sure to subscribe if you want more content like this. Now, if you wanna see a similar video where we take these concepts, but use it to actually build UX screens for an app. I will link that video somewhere around this screen. But that is it for this one. I will see you in the next video.